Hey, praise the Lord, it's me, Brother Clinton, once again, and you're back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His Word is true forever. Hallelujah. Let, yea, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written. And you know, I am very blessed to have seen the growth that God has given to this ministry over the last, especially the, la the last year or so. Uh, many of you have been added to this ministry, and when I say that, I'm not saying that I have a church for anybody to join, because I don't. I belong to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if, you have, if you're under this ministry and obeying the Word of God, then you, you belong to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Uh, there is no such thing as the Church of Clinton, and, and neither will there ever be, unless if after I die somebody makes one up, but it certainly will not be according to anything that I ever asked anybody to do. Um, and I say that because the same thing happened to Martin Luther, and now look at what is, what's going on today with the Lutheran Church. If, if Martin Luther could go into the Lutheran Church and see what people are doing there, he would throw everyone out. Anyway, that's kind of on a side note. I didn't really mean to go there, but I'm, I'm very blessed by how many people are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ via this ministry, and it's wonderful. Praise the Lord. And at the same time, there are, there are many of you who have learned things via the video messages here on the Word Prophet channel, learn things from the Word of God, and are very zealous for those things, which is a wonderful thing. It's wonderful. Praise the Lord. And, and God forbid that I would ever quench the Spirit of Jesus Christ in you and, and, and forbid you to, to go out and, and teach and preach the Word of God as it's written. However, I have one thing that I want to mention to you. I'm, I'm compelled by the Spirit of God to make mention to, to you of. And that is this. There are many of you who have learned from this ministry, because it's written in the Word of God, that for us to use drugs in order to cure sickness and infirmity is called witchcraft, and it is a sin, and they that do so, such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is the truth. Those of us who are Christians, we do not rely on drugs and the doctors of Egypt and their potions and their surgeries and, and their chemicals to cure us from our sicknesses. We have a covenant with the living God, and with his stripes, we are healed. And that's not just a, a parable. Or it's not just a nice saying that just sounds really good. It's the truth. And if we will believe the truth and abide in the truth, then the truth will be made manifest in our lives. And I know this not only because the Bible says so, but because I've known the Lord Jesus Christ to heal me many times uh, from things that you know I didn't get healed from naturally. And I could have gone to a doctor and gone through a lot of pain and spent a lot of money, but why do that when I could go to the Lord Jesus Christ? And also knowing that if I do that, go to a doctor and get his potions and his surgeries, that that's going to keep me from entering into the kingdom of God. Because how is it that I have a covenant with the living God and then I go to the, physician, the physicians of Egypt to heal me when my God has already said that with his stripes I am healed and if I ask anything in his name, he will do it. See, that would be kind of foolish for me to do that. But a lot of people do that, and it's because they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't believe the words of God. And Jesus said, when the Son of Man has come, will he find faith on the earth? And so when he comes, those people who have not believed his word are not going to enter into his kingdom. Why? Because the, the Bible says in the book of the Revelation that the unbelieving and the fearful shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. See, so going to church doesn't mean that you believe God's word. But obeying his word, trusting in his word, and doing what he said, that means you believe in God's word. That means you believe his word. So when a sickness or an infirmity comes upon you, the first thing that you do, if you're a Christian, is you praise the Lord and you get on your knees and you thank him for the provision that he's given you in his word and you receive the healing that he's given to you in his word and then you stand up and rejoice in it and you walk away healed. Praise the Lord. And if the healing isn't manifest yet when you stand up from your prayer, then you don't turn back from what you ask God for. You continue to praise God for what you asked for, believing that you receive it and ye shall have it. Praise the Lord. And I just did a video message a few days ago about that fact that is called, I'll see that when I believe it. Okay, and if you'd like to be edified by the word of God about that particular subject, please go back and check that video out. I think it's about a week old, something like that. If you have trouble finding it, let me know and I'll send it to you. However, there are those of us who have learned these things from the scripture recently, and there are some of us who, how should I say this? There are some of us who have such a zeal for this that we're going out and we're telling people that they need to stop taking their medication. The, there are some young brothers and sisters who are going out and they're telling people 
don't, it's, it's a sin for you to take medication. You can't take medication. You've got to stop taking your medication. That's wrong, my brothers and sisters. That's wrong, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Okay, We are not here as Christians to tell people that they need to stop taking their medication. It's the same thing as, you know, if you saw a guy walking down the street, he was on crutches. Would you, like, walk up behind him and say, in the name of Jesus, and then kick his crutches out from under him? What happens if you kick his crutches out from under him, saying, in the name of Jesus? What happens? He's going to fall down. He needs those crutches to walk on. Until such a time as he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and receives healing, then he will be able to walk. And when he is able to walk, then he won't need his crutches anymore. Then he will put his crutches down. That's the point that I'm, that I'm trying to make. Okay, it's it, The same way is, is uh, holiness works in the same way. Okay, With those of us who are Christians, we don't walk up to a woman walking down the street who is dressed in pants and tell her, you know, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know it's an abomination for women to dress in men's clothing. She's not going to receive that. She's not going to understand that. She needs to know about the judgment of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ first. We preach to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if they'll believe that every man shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ and that they are headed for judgment and that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and laid down his life to make a way for them to escape that judgment and to be saved from their sins so that they could live holy and enter into his kingdom, if they believe that, then we baptize them in the name of the Lord and they get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then we can teach them about how to walk as a Christian. But we can't teach people how to walk as a Christian when they're not Christians yet. okay? Because number one, they're not going to understand that or agree with it, obviously, because they're not Christians. And number two, that's just going to drive them away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we can't go to people that haven't been saved from their sins and start demanding that they stop sinning. okay? We have to tell them first that there is a judgment coming because of their sins, and if they will turn from their sins and obey the gospel, then they can be saved from their sins. And then we begin to teach them what Jesus Christ taught us to tell them. Okay, remember that Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. See? You see? So first he told them to go and preach the gospel and baptize people in his name. And then he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The same way, in the same way, it, it applies to us to teach others about the sin of using medication. We don't go up to someone who hasn't believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and ha doesn't know how to believe on him for healing and tell them that it's a sin for them to take their medication and they need to stop taking it. Because what are we doing if, they, if we do that? If they stop taking their medication when they haven't been healed from their sickness, then they could get really sick or they could die. Well, that's not a very Christian thing to do, is it? That's not what the Lord Jesus Christ sent us to do. He sent us to preach the gospel and baptize. And then when people have believed, believed the gospel and are baptized, then they can believe on the Lord and receive healing from the Lord. Okay, that's the order it's supposed to be in. Now, I'm not saying that it's against the will of God for us to go up to someone who isn't a Christian and minister healing to them. Okay, lay hands on them and heal them or tell them about the healing power of God. And if they believe it, praise the Lord, then they'll be healed. And then they won't need their crutches anymore or their medication anymore. And they will stop taking their medication when they feel in their body that they have been healed. Remember that woman that came up behind the Lord? She had a, a, an issue of blood for 18 years. And she spent all of her money on physicians and for nothing. And she came up behind the Lord because she said in herself, If I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be made whole. She knew it. She believed it. She knew it. And what happened when she touched the hem of his garment? She felt in her body that she was healed from that plague. Then she was healed. Praise the Lord. You see? And then she no longer had to go back to the doctors to try to you know, spend all the rest of her money to try to get healed by those doctors. She didn't need that anymore because she was healed. In the same way, when we preach the Word of God to people, we preach the healing power of Jesus Christ to people, if they're willing to believe that and walk in that and receive their healing from the Lord, then they won't need their medication anymore. So we don't tell people as Christians ever to stop taking their medication. What we do tell people 
is that if they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will no longer need their medication. And then when that happens, when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and see the healing that he bought for them manifest in them, when they feel in their body that they've been healed, and then they'll know that they don't need that medication anymore. And then they will throw it away. Flush it down the toilet where it belongs, because it's poison. It's witchcraft. Pharmacia is witchcraft. Okay? But we don't walk down the street kicking out crutches from, from under people that are crippled. First, we minister the word of the Lord to them. And when they are healed, then they will put their crutches down. Willingly. Praise the Lord. That's how we do it. We want to get it in the right order. So it was on my heart to share this with you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ will heal you. He will heal you. It doesn't matter what your ailment is. It doesn't matter. Jesus Christ is the maker of heaven and earth, and he came in the flesh to save sinners. That's his name. His name declares the fact that he came in the flesh to save sinners. That's what you're saying when you're saying Jesus Christ. You're saying the one which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty who has come in the flesh to save us. That's what you're saying when you say the name Jesus Christ. And he will heal you from any, any, any illness that you have if you are willing to believe his word, if you're willing to believe. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. If you are able to believe it, then God will give it to you if it's according to his will. And if it's a healing for a sickness, then that's according to his will because he said, with his stripes, we were healed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this message be a blessing to all those of you who are in the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.